How you doing guys? Today I'm working on the dash panel for the 1056. As I indicated in my prior video, this is actually, or was, an NOS dash plate. Not for a 1056, uh, for a later model uh, tractor, probably late 60s, early 70s. Somebody was nice enough to mention what this dash plate was for in my prior video. And I apologize, I forgot what you had said. So if you could put it in the comments of this video, that would be greatly appreciated. One thing that I do need to do to this dash plate is to make a provision for my two switches, one for the fuel pump and one for my lights. And I'm actually going to use this hole here, which was the original rocker switch for the lights for this particular tractor. I don't really want to modify this in any way. I just want to kind of just use it. So what I thought of doing is because these two switches are wide enough that they actually cover up the hole almost completely. I was thinking if I backed this area up with a piece of black plastic, I could use the threads that are on the back of the switch to pinch everything together. So basically the switch, would, basically this dash plate would be pinched between the plastic switch and the plastic backing. To do that, I figured I would use this old black five inch taping knife. <laughs> And what I did, I'm going to go off to an angle here so we can see that. What I did was I measured it out and marked where I wanted my holes because these holes need to be half inch. That's the diameter of the back of the switch. And I want, them to, I want the switches to be directly side by side so that way everything is all covered up. You, you'll just see a little bit of black where, this, where a mounting screw or stud used to be on either side. But with it all being black and from a little bit of a distance, I believe it should look fairly clean and nice and smooth and not really um, monkeyed with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill my holes uh, in the plastic. And this is pretty substantial. This is not, I'm not going to say substantial, but this is fairly strong plastic. More than enough strength to do what I need it to do. And there's no grounding issues because the switches themselves are so, are they got a they got a they got a probe for grounding. So I don't need any of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill this out, rough cut it, center up my switches, take my final measurements, and then cut the plastic down. So let me get some of that done and we'll get back to it. So after a little bit of drilling and cutting with my utility knife, because it actually this thing actually cut up pretty easy, I just snapped off the excess. I have this little bit of backing plate. Now it's not perfectly square and the holes didn't quite line up, um, meaning they're not perfectly side by side, but I do have enough, uh, I didn't drill these out to the next size bigger than the switches, so that way I can Put this in place behind on the back side, okay, and maneuver the switches around so they line up real nice and everything is blacked out. I test fitted it just a few seconds ago and it, it actually came, it actually looks really, really good or very acceptable. So I'm gonna, I gotta go out to the shed and get the little plastic nuts that hold these switches in place. I thought I had them in this area, but what I'm gonna do is go get those nuts. I'm gonna mount them in the uh, dash panel just so you guys can take a look and see what, or see how, those switches are gonna look finally. So with the rocker switches mounted, I think it looks pretty good. The switches pretty much fill the hole completely, so I didn't really need anything in the front. You could just barely see where those studs would have gone. I'm trying to get a, see if we can get a little bit of a light on there for you. Yeah, the lighting's, the lighting's bad in my garage, I'm sorry, but it's hard to see, but they just, just barely peek out from the side of the switch. But with the black plastic in the back, you, you, you see nothing. You, you, unless you watch this video and know that it's there, it's probably the only time that you would notice that it's, that it's just barely peeking out. The center, nice and tight, clean, everything. You can't see. There's no light between the switches or anything. And this is what the back side looks like. Just... A piece of plastic pinched between, you know, the, the, the back, the dash panel pinched between two pieces of plastic. So that should be more than sufficient. The, the switches are nice and solid. Nothing moves. 
So I got to go off to the hardware store to get a plug to cover up this hole, this choke hole, because if you remember, I have the foot throttle on the 1056. And instead of having the choke cable kind of running in a position where you can really see it, I actually put the choke uh, push pull in the throttle area and then hide the cable down the back, down the back and under the motor. So it just gives a cleaner look for a cleaner look to the tractor. So I'm going to run over to the hardware store. We're going to go get a plastic cap for that area, mount that. So that's all set to go. Then there's a little plug, a little like uh, aluminum plug that goes in this hole. So we'll put that in place. We'll put the NOS lighter in, mount the switch, and we'll be darn near ready to mount this entire dash panel in with all the wiring. Okay, so with the dash panel loaded, I have my little plug that came with the dash panel itself. It's in place. I went over to Home Depot, got myself a 5 8 like stainless steel, or I should say aluminum plug so that way it matches. The only modification I had to do to the plug is I had to cut three of the little tangs off the bottom and then I curled them over and pressed them into place. So that way there's absolutely no movement of the plug. It's, it's completely solidly mounted in the dash panel and if I ever wanted to, oops sorry if I ever wanted to take it out I just kind of peel out the uh, tangs and that thing will pop right out got the NOS lighter in place and let me just pop that out so you can see it so there it is brand new never used the case has never been used so I have NOS lighter in place and then I have a new uh, OEM ignition switch for a magneto uh, Magneto or uh, yeah, Magneto or uh, in rectifier setup. Sorry about that. My mind just went a little funky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing out to the tractor. I'm going to put all the wire connectors together. Um, I mean, you know, hook up all the wires to the to the terminals and mount the dashboard or dash plate in place so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so the dash panel is installed. Uh, it looks good. I'm real happy with it. Obviously, I haven't put the uh, the choke cable in yet. I'll do that. But I put the battery in, hooked it up, so there is a uh, battery power within the tractor itself. So I'm going to go up to accessory right now and just kind of check the circuits. This switch here is the lights. So if I when I click this on, the little indi the blue blue LED indicator lights come on as well as the lights. So if I go like this. The light is on. If I come over here, my tail light is on. And if I go to the front of the tractor, my red eyes, my red eyes should be on, which they are. So with that, sorry, I tripped over another frame. I'm going to say that the lights work. Turn that off. This switch is my fuel pump. When I do that, when I flip this up, a red indicator light should come on and we should hear the pump start to, to fire off. So let's see if we can get that. And it works. So with that, the excess, um, the lighter works, it works, trust me. I'm not gonna heat up the NOS lighter. Um, now if we go to the start position, we should kick the starter. Yep, so with that, I would say the electrical system in general is okay. Now, I did, when I, I didn't even notice this, it wasn't until this very last second that I noticed it. Let me just open up that hood. I'm just going to, wheel horse always had the stupidest hoods there. Okay. One thing I noticed was that this fitting right here was dripping, I guess, excess fuel or the sealer or whatever on top of my fiberglass uh, cover. And as you would expect, over the winter, it ruined the cover. You can see it right there. Burnt right through the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put this back on quite yet. I'm going to scuff it down, fix that little area, and then just reshoot it black so that way it's all nice. I don't have the gas tank in quite yet. I'll get that in. So I'm going to take a look at that fitting. Eventually, in another, hopefully a week or so, I'll install the gas tank, I'll get the cover back on, we'll put some fuel in it, 
we know the, the electrical system's in fairly good shape. It seems to work. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're interested in this tractor or tractor builds in general, please give this a thumbs up if you like the video, and please subscribe to see sorry, future content uh, when it comes to wheel horse tractors or this tractor in general. It'll be it'll be nice to have this. Sorry about this. I'm just trying to close the hood so that way I can show it to you closed. Um, it's going to be nice eventually to get this tractor out and about. All right, thank you very much. Have a good day.